welcome to Inside of New England's Therapeutic Talk. Please like, subscribe, and comment below. Hello, I am Candace, and you're watching Inside of New England's Therapeutic Talk. The terrible music that you're hearing in the background is coming from my cell phone. Today, <laughs> I am going to be talking with you guys about how to join in a town meeting or city meeting in your town. I don't know, everybody might have different, um, there might be different ways depending on where you live, but um, where I am right now, um, we're phoning in um, to the city meetings. So tonight I am phoning into a city meeting um, about a topic that I've spoken to you guys about on um, a few other occasions. Um, it is regarding um, the removal of the Columbus statue. And what happens is you get a link. So you get a number. And then um, what you do is you get a number. And then what you do is you phone in um, to that number. And then they put you on hold forever. <laughs> this meeting, I'm going to, I can't really say that well. So this meeting starts at 6. 45, I believe. And um, it is now 6.55 and I am just listening to the same song over and over again, I'm sitting here waiting. <laughs> so I'm not sure if I'm being played with or not because something that the mayor over here likes to do is she likes to mute people out that she doesn't want to hear. And um, I don't think she's going to want to hear what I have to say to her. So I might be getting muted. I'm not sure. Uh, but either way, um, I'm here, and if she doesn't want to hear my voice, that's not really her choice because uh, I'm a taxpayer, so <laughs> she's still going to hear my voice either way. And that's something that I wanted to bring up today and discuss with everybody. Um, your voice is important, and one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about the importance of phoning into these meetings, and even if somebody doesn't like your opinion, I mean, there is a such thing as freedom of speech here in this country. And um, I think that everybody should have a right to have the freedom to speak. And, you know, everybody may not agree with what you're saying, but you still have a right to say what you're saying because, you know, we're all citizens, we're all human beings, and we all might have different opinions, but we, our voices need to be heard, um, especially on important topics and decisions that we're making right now to try to make this a better place for everybody to live. Um, we have to make sure that our voices are being heard. And even if there are certain people like this who likes to mute people out and decide who's gonna speak and who's not, we still have to make sure that we are actively participating in trying to ensure that our rights are not being taken away from us um, and letting people know that we are gonna stand up for what is right and um, we do have a right to have our voices heard, um, whether or not you agree with it or not, it's, we still have a right to do that. So um, we can have communication with each other and talk about um, our differences and come up with solutions and problem solve. Um, there's totally nothing wrong with doing that. I think that's a healthy way to take care of things, but just deciding when some people speaking and some people not speaking um, is not gonna fix anybody's problems. So, um, but actually coming to the table and hearing what everybody has to say and rational, rationally compromising with one another and coming up with a common ground because really at the end of the day, we all have more common things and common traits than we do differences. Um, I find that a lot in different religions that I've read about, um, different, um, um, different um, group cultures. Um, we all have more things alike than we do differences. So if we come to the table and we talk about the things that we have in common, you know, we can try to um, rationalize things and figure out and come to some kind of agreement uh, like a happy family should be doing. So it looks like the meeting is actually starting. Um, I hear them saying something, so I will tune back in.
So what happens is they tell you you I'm have to say your name. Okay, first call and address, please. Candace Scott. Okay, proceed. Yes, I'm calling um for the removal of this. Hello? Yes, I'm calling for the removal of the Columbus statue. Um, I think it would be really nice if we could sit down and have a real conversation about where the statue should be placed. I think giving it to the Italian community or um, putting it inside of a museum, um, somewhere we can, where we can talk about the history behind uh, the statue. I think it's very degrading that people like myself have to drive past that statue every day as if I'm not welcome in my own neighborhood um, where I own property. Um, I think it's very degrading and hurtful that I call to this meeting over and over again and say the same thing. And I feel like I shouldn't have to keep repeating myself. Um, and several others have been doing the same exact thing. I feel like we are not being heard and it's very disrespectful um, at this point. And I also want the subpoena power for the, um, I hear the mayor's trying to water down um, the plans that she promised. Um, and I think that that needs to stop as well. Um, we need to have conversations about these things, not have one person trying to make these decisions. We're taxpayers, we are voting for you. So I think that you need to hear the voices of the people who are actually putting you into your position. You work for us. So it's time to start listening and doing what we're asking you to do. This is not about people who live in other neighborhoods. This is about the people who actually live here. All right. So I'm not sure how many more times I'm gonna have to keep saying it, but I'll keep calling <laughs> until um, somebody starts listening to what I'm saying. Basically now, several people from all around the state and outside of the state are gonna call in and they're gonna say how they culturally are connected to this statue. And um, my argument is that they can have the statue then, right? If they're so culturally connected to it. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna have to continue to listen to this for two hours or not, we'll see how many uh, of the people who are culturally connected to the statue and refuse to have conversations. Like I said, um, having conversations are important. So basically, I'm not going to um, listen to all of this because I've done this before and I'm pretty sure they're gonna start saying some things about how I should go back to Africa um, in a little bit because that seems to be the trend of these meetings. Um, so I just really wanna encourage people to uh, not be afraid to stand up to these people. They work for us um, and put them in their place. Um, let them know that that is how, what this is. You work for me. I live here, I pay taxes here. I don't need someone from Clinton, Connecticut telling me what I need to do in my neighborhood um, and yeah, I mean, that's basically, I feel like it's very degrading that someone from another neighborhood could call up and tell me what I should do in the town where I pay taxes. Um, it's kind of brings me back to slavery. It's like, well, because um, you're someone who maybe has a little bit more of an income or you're a certain, from a certain background, you think that you can tell me what I should have to drive past in my neighborhood. <laughs> so isn't that interesting? Um, that that is um, happening right now because that's how I feel about him right now because I already know what he's saying. Um, so I just wanted to share this with you guys. Um, I don't plan what I'm going to say, so I know maybe I got a little bit emotional during that. Like I never plan what I'm saying to you guys either. When I do these videos, I just say whatever and then um, hope it sounds good. <laughs> so, it is what it is. Um, this whole situation is what it is too. 
Um, it's very racist. It's very um, degrading. It's very insulting that the elected officials are not hearing a word that we're saying to them and having people from all around the state trying to tell us how we should live. Um, we learned something. I hope it encourages you guys to really, really, really be strong and go ahead and just say what you want to say during these meetings. I mean, you have every right to. You have a freedom of speech. You have a freedom to your own opinion. And whether or not other people agree to that opinion is their own business. But at the end of the day, we're not going to solve any problems if everybody doesn't come to the table and give their opinion and people don't listen because people on this phone right now need to listen, right? They don't get to make all the choices without listening to what we have to say, okay? So that's the, um, that's my words of wisdom for the day. I will be back. I have really exciting things coming up and there's going to be a lot of posting. I'm so excited. There's a lot going on. Um, I also had some other So yeah, I mean, it's just going to keep going on and on and um, on and on and on and on and on and on about people talking about how this is their culture. Someone who raped and murdered and killed my ancestors is their culture. And therefore, I should drive past something that is very, very related to um, Hitler. Um, it's like we wouldn't allow Hitler to be up there, but it's okay for that to be up there because I'm black. Because the person that killed, um, that killed people of color and hurt the indigenous people in this, in this country, um, it's okay for us to have to drive past that. So it is very disturbing. Um, it's all right because they already know me. They know where I live. I mean, you guys know where I live. I mean, I'm not afraid. I have the right to speak and say, what I need to say here. Um, and all the people in this meeting, you know, I, I don't really think that it's fair that they get to know where I live, these people from all over the place. <laughs> you know, it's great. You have to state your name and you, you know, it's like, um, but I encourage you guys, don't be afraid. Speak. Your voice is really important. Um, and I hope that everybody stays safe, stay well. Stay safe because it is a really dangerous place out here. My cat's going crazy back there. Stay safe, stay well, and I hope to see you again soon. Hopefully, with something a little bit more brighter and happy. <laughs> okay, bye. And so the end of the meeting went okay. I mean, I listened to the whole thing. It was over. It ended up being over two hours long. Um, as you can tell, I am completely exhausted. Um, so I'm not recording my face right now. Um, it, um, was a very long draining meeting again. Um, I think the, um, the, um, people who are saying that this is their heritage kind of have better control over themselves this time. Not as many racist comments, but, um, the agenda is very clear um, that it does go a lot deeper than a cultural, um, a cultural heritage of why the statue, um, is needing to remain, um, uh, clearly, um, the elected officials need to be listening to the residents. Um, and I was really happy that there were several people that spoke in after me who, um, supported that and who let the elected officials know that um, basically we will be taking care of that next November um, if they're not going to start hearing what we're asking them to do. Um, so I'm really happy um, that people are in support of that. Um, also, um, another thing that um, I usually bring up, and like I said, because I don't plan what I'm saying, um, have forgot about <laughs> the petitions. <laughs> and I was really happy someone um, who spoke after me also brought up the fact that, um, you know, I had written a petition um, regarding this and there were a lot of people who signed this petition and um, for whatever reason, they're just pretty much disregarding that. Um, so 
thank you to the caller that um, mentioned um, the petition that um, that I created. Um, and I just want to encourage everybody to continue to um, act on things that you find are important. Um, your voice is powerful again. And, um, you know, your history and your truths and I think that really what it goes back to is the truth here. Um, it's going to always go back to the truth with this situation. Um, you know, the truth is, is that um, uh, lots of people were hurt. Um, the history, uh, I'll post the videos below again, um, showing um, the evidence behind this, um, because I'm not just speaking out of emotion. I am speaking on what's true. Um, and I just want to make sure that I'm very clear about that. Um, so I will post um, some links below. Um, one is um, from a news broadcast. Um, also, um, a video that I have posted before, I'm going to post um, those below as well. Um, so one is a historical um, archaeologist. Ologist. Um, she um, has a whole bunch of evidence in this video. Um, I clearly, I really think anybody who does not understand this, I've said this before, should really um, listen to that video and really do the research because um, in school, in public schools, um, they teach us their history. And um, I think that it's important that we really start learning about what the true history is because um, what is taught in public schools is not always accurate. So uh, thank you. Um, I will have some videos. Bye.